Did you know that J.R.R. Tolkien made a mistake in Appendix A of Lord of the Rings, and that his son, Christopher, doubled down on that mistake when editing The Silmarillion, only realising the error when he discovered a previously unknown manuscript of his father's? Now, I know that sounds dramatic, but it's actually one of my favourite stories about the textual history of Tolkien's works. And in this video, I'd love to share it with you. So if you take an older edition of Lord of the Rings, like this 1966 second edition, and look at Appendix A, you'll see that it has a king's list that looks something like the following. It lists various names of kings and queens in Numenor in order. And then a couple of paragraphs later, it says, and at last the 20th king took his royal name in Numenorean form, calling himself Ar Adunakor. Lord of the West. Now the problem is, if you actually count the names in the earlier list, you'll find that Adunakor is actually 19th. There's a discrepancy between the list of kings and queens and the later paragraph. There's two possible ways of resolving this inconsistency. Either the paragraph calling Adunakor the 20th ruler is incorrect, or the list of kings and queens is incorrect, likely missing somebody. But if it's missing someone, was that deliberate on J.R.R. Tolkien's part, or was it just an accident? A reader wrote to Tolkien in 1964, pointing out the inconsistency, and in an unpublished letter, Tolkien responded, As the genealogy stands, he should be called the 16th king and 19th ruler. 19 should possibly be read for 20, but it is also possible that a name has been left out. Tolkien apparently went on in this letter to explain that he didn't have his papers on the matter at hand, and so he couldn't confirm either way. But Tolkien does seem to rule out having done it deliberately, or at least didn't remember doing it. But at the very least, he left open the possibility of whether the list or the later paragraph is correct. Robert Foster in 1971 published the Guide to Middle-earth. It wasn't yet the complete guide, basically following the King's List. Now, if we look at the Akalabeth in the first edition of the Silmarillion, uh, something like this one here, we'll see that it too follows the King's List in Lord of the Rings. Whether Christopher was influenced by Foster in going with that decision, it's not clear. But the first edition Silmarillion goes with Adunakor being the 19th, Gimilzor being the 22nd, and Arpharazon being the 24th ruler, having 23 rulers before him. But in Unfinished Tales, Christopher Tolkien admits that in the draft of Akalabeth, his father actually gave different numbers. The draft of the Akalabeth says that Ar Adunakor was the 20th king, not the 19th and that four and twenty kings had ruled before Arpharazon. In preparing the Silmarillion, Christopher assumed that this was in error and that the king's list in Lord of the Rings was the true numbering of the kings, and so made the adjustment accordingly in the Akalabeth. But then, after the publication of the Silmarillion, he uncovered a manuscript called the Line of Elros, Kings of Numenor. And that proved that Robert Foster and Christopher Tolkien were wrong all along. In the line of Elros, kings of Numenor, there is a new king inserted into the list, a 19th king, Tar Ardamin. The insertion of Ardamin into this list pushes Ar Adunakor into the 20th place. In other words, this list, used in Lord of the Rings and in the Silmarillion and in the Guide to Middle-earth, was wrong. And in fact, it was that paragraph in Appendix A later on, calling Adunakor the 20th ruler, that was correct. And so first of all, the Silmarillion got changed. In a second edition, published in 1999, Christopher corrected the number of the kings in the Akalabeth. But then, how was Lord of the Rings corrected? Well, if you go to a more modern edition of Return of the King, like this one, and look in Appendix A, you'll see that the name Tar Ardamin has been inserted. This correction makes the King's List now consistent with the later paragraph, with the draft of the Akalabeth and the second edition of the Silmarillion, and ultimately of the manuscript, the line of Elros, 
Kings of Numenor, which you can find in Unfinished Tales. Robert Foster's Complete Guide to Middle-Earth, of course, has also made the correction. Now, interestingly, you may find that your copy of Lord of the Rings, even if it's fairly recent, may not have this change. Let me know in the comments what version of Lord of the Rings you have and whether it does add Tar Ardamin in the appendix or not. Sometimes it's taken a while for certain textual changes to make it through to all the editions. The paperbacks in particular are sometimes quite a bit behind. One of the things I love about this story is it's the sort of thing that actually happens in real life, where certain things seem contradictory and then new manuscripts are discovered that resolve the situation. And even though these are just the mistakes of a writer of fiction and his editor son, I think they do add to the depth of Tolkien's world building. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please be sure to check out the other videos that I've been making and if you like them, uh, please subscribe. Thank you very much and I'll see you in another video. Bye bye.